All right, so today I'm a Battalion S1, and uh, I got a call from the company, off company, that said uh, an award was submitted for one of their soldiers, and they'd like me to take care of it. So here I'm logged in as a Battalion S1 Pro, and I'm going to find the award that was submitted and insert the routing's uh, workflow and push it forward for approval. So logged in real quick. Uh, I see that I have a notification, so I click on it, and I see award recommendation uh, that needs to be, uh, is waiting my approval. So I click on that, and the award comes up. So I just take a quick look at it, and I will apply my unit's policy to the award. So I'm gonna validate that the soldier's eligible here, check eligibility. I'm going to ensure that the period of award, the PPD, all of the achievement citations, all of that's in accordance with what our organizational policy on awards is. Uh, if there are any attachments, I will review them. Um, and if I need to add them, uh, I can do that as well. Uh, something that occurs often is that an award will be sent up and it's missing an attachment. And all too often we would just push it back and say, you know, send it. So this allows us to, you know, reach out to whoever recommended it, have them send us the document via email or whatever, and then we can upload it for them and not really slow things down. All right, so I've validated all this information. I've put in my attachments if necessary. I've reviewed my attachments. To me, the award looks as though, uh, the PAR looks as though it meets the organizational's policy. So now I need to insert the workflow. Uh, and if you haven't seen any of our workflow videos, I've uh, popped an iCard up there so you can talk, take a look at um, inserting workflows and understanding UDLs. And if uh, you also, if you watch our previous video on PARs, uh, there's a video that discusses inferring, inserting workflows for PARs uh, in, in an award as a PAR. And so now what I'll do is I'll insert the approval chain. And so one thing we did in the PAR video is we had a workflow created and we just inserted that workflow. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to ad hoc those individuals in. We don't want to have a workflow built. We just want to pick the approvers. So as you see here, I've already in, inserted the company commander and the battalion commander. Because it's an RCOM, I'm going to ad hoc in um, the brigade commander. So I'll just go ahead and hit the plus sign here. I'll pop in the approver, operator ID of the brigade commander, and I'll hit insert. So now rather than creating a workflow, I've essentially just created the workflow at this moment. Um, rather than having me you know, go through a menu of workflows, I've just said I want it to go from this person to that person to that person. Um, it's called ad hocing a workflow. And so in this particular instance, uh, it's gonna go from commander to commander to commander. That is all entirely up to unit policy, whether they want it to be, um, go from intermediate approver through intermediate approver, like you see on the back of a 638, you can build that workflow or you can ad hoc that in. But if you're processing a lot of awards, it would be easier obviously to have workflows pre-built so you don't have to keep doing this over and over and over again. But that's is really how easy it is to, to ad hoc in your people. So I'm gonna go ahead and click close on this. And now I've got my approval chain built. Once I hit recommend approval as the S1, it's gonna go directly to the company commander for them to make their recommendation in IPSE. The other options that are available are to recommend denial, but that seems more like um, a commands decision to me than a, than a staff person. And then pushback. Pushback would be, I need to send it back for correction. So we talked briefly about missing documentation. There is an opportunity to push it back there. Um, but another reason to push it back would be, um, you know, it's a duplicate award. Um, there's a lot of mistakes I need you to make and I'm not prepared to make them for you. So um, the individual in the S1 pool and all of the intermediate and approval of commander, uh, approval authorities have these same choices that they can do. So we're gonna hit recommend approval and then we're gonna log in as a couple commanders and push this through the chain so you can see that it's approved. Before I hit recommend approval, I wanna make sure that they're eligible. So I click the eligibility button and it says that they have passed the rule um, for being flagged and I am eligible. So that's great. And I go ahead and click yes. So this is the equivalent of signing the back of the 638 when the S1 or the commander would make the you know, would validate that the individual is eligible for the award. It's the same, same theory. And now I'll go ahead and click recommend approval. And I have no comments, um, maybe ready for your signature. Okay. You can or not put anything in there. Click submit and it is on its way. 
So I have approved the request. And now as you see here on the, uh, on the top left-hand corner, it tells you where it's residing right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log in uh, as these company battalion commanders and make the approval. And then we will log in and finally as the brigade commander and do the approval of that award. Just another reminder, hit that subscribe button. We've got a few more awards videos coming out. Here we are on Facebook and Twitter. We post the videos and put some notes. Um, we still are on MillSuite and, and we push the videos through MillTube and then we put posts on S1Net. So if you could follow us, leave some comments, like, find it helpful, all of those things. I want to get my S1 points up. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching. Defend and serve.